this is gonna be your best Listen. podcast ever. <laughs> <laughs> Epicurean. But OFC and pink lemonade's pretty damn good. It'll put your boat in the marsh. <laughs> Jesus did not die so you could eat yellow number five. <laughs> Excitable. The nose starts off gentle with noticeable sense of grain that takes shape in the form of fresh baked bread. Ma'am, you're in the wrong podcast. <laughs> Educated ish. I have used the term overproof for so long um, without really knowing what it is. It, it yeah, it, because for is me, there a definition officially? Welcome to Bitches and Bourbon. We're live. Hello, Reba. Hi, April. Oh my God, y'all. We are so excited to be here. We can't even stand ourselves. Dear Jesus, we're so happy. (laughs) Okay, so, so. We are done adulting for today. We are done adulting for today. Uh, And I know that if you listened to the last episode, we were like, bitches, I'm graduating. And we have all of these recordings coming. And hopefully there'll be one right after the other. (laughs) And I can't make a car crash noise, but if I could, it would sound something like yes. what happened right after that. Yes. So Agreed. It was awful. It was so terrible. So if we're a little overexcited, I'll just go ahead and tell you why. So in the middle of April, I started battling a kidney infection. And so I would think I had it kicked, and then it would come back, and then I would think I had it kicked, and then it would come back. And then I thought I had it kicked, and that's when we recorded that episode, and everybody was very excited, and graduation was right around the corner, and we had planned for a graduation party, and oh my God, I'm off for the summer, and everybody's super excited, because that hasn't happened in three years. And then my kidney infection comes back. Yes. The day before graduation. Graduation. Yes. I think I'm not going to make it to grad. Motrin, Tylenol, adrenaline got me through graduation. I got into bed as soon as graduation was over that day, and I didn't get up for two and a half weeks. <laughs> Long story short. <laughs> it, was, it was so bad. It was like a week of 104 fevers. My husband thought I was he was going to take me to the hospital. He told me that the day there's a couple of guys yes. I probably should have. It was so bad. And then when I finally stopped running a fever... I was just exhausted. I, I just I couldn't get any no of my energy, energy back. Yeah. Like it was so bad. Lost fifteen pounds. Like it's now that part wasn't so terrible, but the rest. I mean, I don't it, think you can afford to lose fifteen pounds. It, Let's just put that out there. It was awful. So now here we are. Yay! I'm so excited. And we and we've slow walked a little bit already, so hopefully not everything goes straight to your brain. Today. Yeah, because <laughs> like the first time we decided to have a drink, and I was like, Whoa. just a little taste. <laughs> well, there went one, and I'm finished. <laughs> and then the next time, I was like, oh, there's two. Whew, okay. I'm finished. I'm finished. <laughs> then there was your breakfast, <laughs> like your your morning drink. Good lord, I'm like. And that went straight to your brain. I was like, <laughs> I left one person, and now I'm a totally different person. And I'm like, this is crazy. You're ruining my whole life. <sighs> but anyway, we're going to try this on for size this evening. We're going to see what it does. Because we are slow walking things, there's a beautiful bottle um, that I was gifted for my graduation of the Hemingway First Edition Rye Whiskey. So we were going to do that this evening. But then I decided I'm taking a Hemingway seminar for my first master's semester in the fall. Nice. And I really wanted to wait until I at least got the reading list. Because okay. I'd, I'd be interested to know what that is and see if we can't, like, maybe tie the things together. That sounds fun. I thought so, too. So I didn't think you would mind too and much if I flipped the script a little. And there is no time limit on celebrating. There's some truth for you. <laughs> Especially since we've had to reschedule the graduation party, which made my whole feelings hurt. But that's okay. We'll get there. We'll get there. So tonight, what we thought we would do, since we did the Infinity Bottle last time, that's kind of been like our marker for season. So this is technically season five, although we just started to sequentially walk the episodes through because it's easier for me to keep track that way. we got to remember to pour some in the Infinity Bottle. Got to remember to pour some in the Infinity Bottle. Uh, But we figured that since we had done that last time, then tonight what we would do is we would go ahead and talk about the High West Whiskey. Uh, We've had both of these before. 
for. We already know we like them both already. So we thought that was kind of a nice way to kind of move back into it. It is the first time that we've ever done, I believe, a bourbon and a rye for at the, some, on the same episode. For some reason, I'm feel, I feel like I don't remember the rye. Oh, yeah. I've got the empty bottle right over there. <laughs> Yeah, there's an empty, both of those bottles, I have them Maybe I'm just thinking about at the bar. Yeah, and maybe we didn't have it at the bar. I don't know which ones we had at the bar. So that's, so we did end up at a place called Mood Rights. It's downtown Savannah. Great little place if, and it's really not that little, actually. Uh, If you're ever, I think it's what they call the Starlight District. I am no longer 20 nothing, so I am not nearly (laughs) as versed in downtown social life um, as I once was. But it's a great bar. It's got it's got like a real sawdust kind of feel to it but it's neat because you'll walk in and there'll be chicks in um lily pulitzer and a biker gang like in the same place having the best time yeah. right like and it almost seems like two different like it is set up to be kind of like two different rooms there's like a more like sit down area wasn't there like a sit down mm-hmm. area in the front and then you walk back and then that's where they had the live band in the bar yes yeah and then there's like there's the live band that uh the stage is right there and then it there's, there's the the like the bar tops and then the bar and then it extends out into like an outdoor porch and, yes. and it's it's not hardly closed off at all i mean i'm assuming they do they can right but the day that we went it was the afternoon and they didn't so it's a great place it's called mood rights it's absolutely amazing had the best time and that's where we saw the high west and i think they had like three or four different varieties if i thought more about it I, we took actually pictures. I, I was gonna say i think i might have the pictures i know we took them yeah so you did find the pictures? Yes. Okay, so which ones did we have at Mood Rights? We had the Double Rye, American Prairie Bourbon. Which is the same. It as, is the same. It is the okay. same. They've changed their packaging. Got it. And Because the Double Rye looks different, too. Um, and then the High Country American Single Malt Limited Supply. Yes, that's the one he said we probably couldn't get. That's the one we played a little bit more for. Because remember he said, he said, now this shot's going to cost you a little extra. We're like, yes. we don't care. We want it. Like, we we want to try, try all of them. Yes. And, and we decided then we were High West fans. Like, all of them were delicious. Yes, we enjoyed all of them. So we bought them again just to have, and we did. And then when I went back to the liquor store and I found the different little... the when I was looking for something else to get, what I did was I just bought a couple of collections. The High West, they only had two, so I bought both of them. Uh, later, in a different episode, we'll talk about Rabbit Hole. I got a couple, I got three of those. Yeah. And then it was the Penelope, and I think I got four of those. So today we're going to do the High West. Uh, so without further ado, we are going to start with the bourbon, um, really because the bourbon is, is lower in proof, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Not that it's really gonna matter (laughs) cheers bitches it really is good i'm going to put ice in it just because i'm i'm moving myself easy today it doesn't need it they're the same proof it's amazing it is it's just so good it's got a real easy start to it it is moderately warm i was gonna say it warms you going down but it's not but it's it's not a fiery inferno it's not holy shit i need a chaser yeah or or it's not holy shit. I wish it was winter. Like mm. I'm not trying to like come yes. out of a jacket or anything. It's it's 75 degrees here in the bitch barn, and it's just a nice, perfect, perfect. perfect. It really is. I, we just and at forty one dollars, you just can't. You just can't. Forty six proof. Yeah. Yep, it comes in. It comes in at forty six proof. It's been aged, and it's a two year old bourbon. That's it. Yeah, like yeah, because all of that's on the. I found all of it on the label. Two years, I think, is what it said on there. Um, oh no, I didn't. I found that one on the website. Their website. Oh no, this is, it does say it, min- uh, aged a minimum of two years. Minimum of two years in charred white American oak barrels. And I'm going to tell you what I loved when I went to start breeze. There's a lot of things about High West. First, I loved High West just because it was a delicious whiskey. Uh, second, when I went to go research it for this episode, there's a whole lot I love about it. A, s- the people that started it, it's a husband and wife team. Nice. David and Jane Perkins. And you don't hear that very often. And David. Actually, have we ever? I don't know. Like don't in know. our episodes anyway. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Penelope. Penelope is a husband and wife. But we haven't done an episode. No, no, no. No, so. we haven't. No, we haven't. And I think Pinhook has a husband and wife but the story was kind of 
It was real thin, and I couldn't figure out why they loved whiskey. Couldn't figure it out, right? Well, they went to a wedding in Kentucky. David is a biochemist. (laughs) Okay. They go to a wedding in Kentucky. While they're there, they do a tour of Maker's Mark. And David is in there going, holy shit, this is just like my job. Like, <laughs> mix this and a little bit of that, that and, and taste it out. It, it twirls through here and it <laughs> does these things and, and particle A loves on particle B and voila, you have shit, right? <laughs> so he's in Maker's Mark and he's like, holy shit, this is just like my job. And from the story, is it hyperbole for the story? I don't know. Who cares? It makes for a much better story. And I right. appreciate if they change the details to make the story better. Yeah. But he's like, holy shit. And then he looks at his wife and he goes, I am quitting my job. We are moving to Utah. <laughs> and we're making whiskey. So why Utah? And she said, bet. I'm Let's in. go. Right? I was like, oh So is God. there something with Utah? Yes. Okay. So, and, and I thought the idea to move to Utah was really smart, too. Because they understood that they were coming into a pretty jammed up whiskey market Mm -hmm. and so one of the ways they thought to differentiate themselves was to move out west where high west right where there wasn't quite so much whiskey being made make a name for themselves which they thought was kind of interesting yeah because like jane said jane has wrote a book we'll get there (laughs) um like they said they were like Whenever Jane said, whenever I think of the West, like you always think of like cowboys, the wilderness, and mm-hmm. whiskey, and everything comes from the East. And so they moved to Utah. They have one of only two, what do they call it? In ski in gastro distilleries. So I guess, <laughs> and, and, and I don't know, I, I know shit all about skiing because uh, yes. skiing requires snow. Yeah, not interested. Which I'm vehemently <laughs> opposed to snow. Uh, so I know nothing yes. about skiing. But from the looks of the way it works, it's kind of like what we have here with some of our on-dock restaurants where you can come in by boat, dock, yeah. and then go to the restaurant. There you can go in by you ski. <laughs> Evidently, what it looks like is you ski down the mountain (laughs) make sure you know where to stop (laughs) and then into the distillery which to me seems a might bit more dangerous (laughs) than the boat business especially your departure afterwards because like when you're skiing because like when you're skiing it's you like your you whole have, body has to be and you have to do it yes right like it's your job like you have each to, individual you, you yeah. can't hop on and ride you, you don't have a designated <laughs> skier right like nobody like you don't have a designated skier <laughs> we have a designated boat driver right like we have that and so i i don't know it's fascinating to me if the snow wasn't involved i'd love to go check it out i, I think that i would go in the summer yeah and then you can just explain it to me and then i can imagine the <laughs> snow and walk down the ski slope without the cold oh, no. how high up are they is there snow year round I, God. <laughs> then just take pictures and send them to me like i don't know so anyway i thought it was just a do they s- have any pictures on their website I, no okay. not like n- not not, not that's what I really want is like suffice. a YouTube channel. That's what I there really want. Go. And I didn't and I didn't find one. Of course, I didn't look very hard. But that's what it all sounded like to me. And quite <laughs> frankly, at this moment in time, like what I have in my brain is way more fun. <laughs> so like I'm just moving with that. But I thought the story was so cool. I was like, well, that's very interesting, especially since that's the way it's working. Um, and and their booze is so good. And then when you go to the website, and you look at their different whiskeys, mm-hmm. it's all completely transparent. Like nice. you pull up the whiskey. You don't have to search forever for no. mash bills. You go and... right here. High West Bourbon. Like nice. there's the page. Here's how much it cost. And they can only there's not a whole lot of states they can ship to, but whatever. Here's like how to enjoy the nose, the taste, the 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 story from the back of the label. The mash bill is like right there. I even like their fancy corks. No, it's just it, it, Everything about it is fantastic. A whole lot about it is fun. If it was a free trip, would you tolerate the snow? No. <laughs> okay, maybe. Maybe. Maybe if it was... Briefly. Maybe. 
Okay, I'm not trying to make your brain hurt. I just... Okay, if it was paid for, and I got to meet Jane, and she signed her book for me. There you go. And I don't know that... I, and I didn't have to ski. Yeah, we don't have to get on skis. Yeah, like if I don't have to get on skis... There's just going to be like, snow. So there's my... There's my... There's then, your parameters. Then I, then I think... And then somebody's... And... and I, I think we're probably close to the same size, so she would have to let me borrow some cold weather gear. Because so you're I, not buying. Because I'm not buying. I'm not spending any money on cold weather gear. Um, although I really, my husband did tell me the other day. Not the other day. It was, you do have a very pretty. I've got winter jackets, coat. and I'm yeah. obsessed. I'm obsessed with jackets. Like I would spend so much money on jackets if I thought that I would ever use them. But right. I don't. But my. But I always. I'm always like, oh my god, those jackets. That's such a beautiful jacket. And one time, my husband looks at me and he says, you know. He says, you sure do like jackets for somebody that's never going anywhere to wear them. <laughs> and I'm like, they're just beautiful. They're just pretty. You get to wear them a couple times a year yeah, when we know. have some shitty like, weather. Whatever. I'm like, well, <laughs> evidently, May's been fucking disrespectful. So, I mean, it's but been, you have not needed your winter coat. I, I think if I went somewhere, I think I might have. <laughs> I'm very sensitive. I'm very sensitive. Oh. Uh, so, anyway, gr- it's, it's, just, it's just a great line. I can't We're say in it. June now. Can you believe that? Yes, I can because it's my birthday month. Bitch, uh, whoop. Whoop. Still, like it just seems to be flying by. I do. I will tell you. I this. need. I need summer to slow down. I no. I need the weather to pick up. Well, that's what I need. Okay. And but I and still. I love and I love that my birthday is the very very last day, the day of, of June. The, yeah. So that when June first hits, it's like my birthday month, and I get it all the whole the whole month, month because like. Typically, if you celebrate your birth month, like once your birthday comes, then it's just kind of like over. But yeah. for me, like that's fine because my birthday is over and then it's July. So whatever. Right. Yeah. I love that. I still have a week left after my birthday. Yeah. In a month. Uh, yeah. No, I, I get I get the whole I get the whole thing. So we are going to try the rye here in a little bit. I am not rushing this particular glass. Can we get some ice? A, it's still. I, you know what? I don't think I'm putting ice in this. Okay. It, it's. I like maybe, it. Maybe I'll do the ice in the rye, um, when so that we so that this doesn't get watered down and I can get there. Uh, but it's it's just good. I just don't think it needs it. Oh, I am remiss. I am remiss. So today, Reba and I, and and you'll see the picture when when the podcast posts. One of my besties' mother-in-law, Busha. And everybody calls her Busha. It's Polish for grandma, but everybody calls her Busha. Busha, for my graduation, sent me the most beautiful Waterford tumblers. Aww. And that's what Reba and I are drinking out of for the very first very time. Nice. This is the very first pour inside of these beautiful Waterford crystal glasses. They are very pretty. That Busha bought me for my graduation. And so thank you, Busha. We love you so much. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. They're so, perfect. They're beautiful. And they're absolutely beautiful. So I did think that what I would do, since it has been a small minute, right? It's been a small minute. We are on season five, Hmm. after all, uh, when this particular... That's crazy, too. I know. When this particular episode airs, it'll be episode 41. Wow. Like, we've done this shit 41 times already. I'm so proud of us. Um, How appropriate that it's like 41 for the brand new season. I know, but I mean, I'm wondering, I'm wondering how fast we would have to put shit out to like record and release the 47th episode on my 47th birthday. Maybe we'll just see if we can't record. We don't have a, a lot of shit scheduled. I know, but I mean, that's a lot going out real fast. And I'm fixing to be in school, so I need to have some stuff. Maybe kind we of have like some shorter episodes. Buffered. Or maybe maybe I just, like this would, like, I don't know. We'll figure it out. But, yeah. But like, like we're timing it really close, right? So on June 30th, I turned 47. And yay me. And I'm super excited about that. You feel more than welcome to um, send birthday presents. They're always <laughs> welcome. But what I thought we might do, which wasn't a terrible idea, because I, at some point, I don't know, I keep saying I'm going to do this and I don't. We started so haphazard. So when we started this podcast, we just like pulled the trigger and we were like, fuck it. We're just going to do what we do and it's going to happen. What's going to happen? Like nobody's paying us to do this. You can if you want to. And then maybe we would do it different. But until you do that, then... I, you just get what you get, and we are what we are. So we weren't very 
regimented. So what happened in previous episodes, like I'm not really sure where it happened, when it happened, what it looked like, or those kind of things. But I am fairly certain one of the very first things we did in one of the very first episodes, we were talked about what made bourbon a bourbon. Yes. And I'm not really sure if we've ever done a bourbon and a rye. We have not. Together in one episode. And talked about the differences. And talked about why one is one and one is the other. So since we were doing an episode that had both a bourbon whiskey and a rye whiskey, I thought maybe we would go back through, if you're new to us or if this is one of the first episodes you pounce on to, talk about what makes those things different. So when we talk about whiskey, we're talking about a wide variety of spirit line. We are talking about Irish whiskey, Scotch, American whiskey, Tennessee whiskey, Canadian whiskey, Japanese whiskey. Like all of those things are whiskey. And one of the best ways I've ever thought to describe it is just like every square is a rectangle, right. but not every rectangle is a square. That's the same way. Every bourbon is a whiskey, but not every whiskey is a bourbon. Where rectang- where squares have m- more requirements they have to fulfill to be a square, a bourbon has more requirements that it has to fill to be a bourbon. And those requirements start with, and I know this is going to, this always pisses people from Kentucky off, but it does not have to be made in Kentucky. No, it does not. Bourbon simply has to be made in the United States. It is considered uh, a distinctive product of the United States. So bourbon has to be made in the United States, 51% corn, uh, n- distilled no more than 80%, 80% alcohol aged in new charred oak barrels, can't go into the barrel higher than 125 proof. Yes. Um, It doesn't have to be aged for any particular length of time, but if you see something called straight bourbon whiskey or straight whiskey, then it's been at least two years. At least, yes. At least two years. Um, And if there's an age statement on the bottle, then that's the age of the youngest whiskey bourbon that went into the bottle yeah it could be multiple multiple years in there mixed in there but right but as soon as that's you, the as youngest soon, as soon as you put a three-year-old in there it doesn't matter if the oldest one is 35 years old it's, yeah. it's now a three-year-old bourbon um and you can't use anything but water uh to do anything to it so that's bourbon yes rye whiskey doesn't have all of those same stipulations correct so if we look at if you're ever curious if you go to the code of federal regulations (laughs) title 27 chapter one sub chapter a (laughs) part five sub part one (laughs) (laughs) 5.143 If you go there, yes. you will find all the things that you need to know. And they have a great little chart in there that tells you about all the different whiskeys and what they mean. American Whiskeys has the great chart. Underneath it, they have like this really nondescript thing about Scotch, Irish whiskey, and Canadian whiskey that just says, it's this. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, it comes from a different country, and we're the United States, so we don't really care what it is. <laughs> Um, so rye whiskey, uh, instead of it 51% corn, it has to be 51% rye. Okay. Right? And then it's not bourbon. Because right. it's not 51% corn. Right. So then it's just rye. So you'll never see a rye bourbon because it doesn't work that way. Correct. But the double rye makes sense because that mash bill for the dub- the High West double rye is 95% rye. Which blows my brain because I have such a hard time finding rye whiskeys that I enjoy. Right. But I love this one. So what was what's kind of humorous to me, just in my, you know, shenanigans, I put in rye versus double rye whiskey <laughs> just to see what it said. The very top thing that comes up is from High West. Nice. And it says double rye is a blend of two different rye whiskeys. It's also crafted to be twice as spicy as your average rye whiskey. Well, now that makes sense because when you look at the mash bill, and like I said, 
you have heard, if you've listened to this podcast for any length of time, you have heard Reba and I lament the lack of transparency in the whiskey industry. Yes. Drives us crazy, which is one of the things that I love about the High West website. Because, for instance, with the High West bourbon, when you look at it and you go to the website and you just click on the bottle and it's right there, you do not have to dig for it. Mm -hmm. It is literally right there. And it says straight bourbon, the mash bill, straight bourbon whiskey, and it gives the mash bill from MGP, so they don't even have, they even have no problems with the fact that some of their whiskey is sourced from MJ, MGP, which I love that about them, yeah. good for them. Um, then there's another mash bill, which I'm assuming is another bourbon that it's blended with. And then the last statement is, other whiskey components are undisclosed due to contractual reasons. There's a lot I like about that sentence. I like that they didn't let, I'm glad that they're obviously on board with transparency right. obviously and i love that and they did not let that ideal get in the way of making a great bottle like if there was whiskey that they needed they wanted to make a great bottle of whiskey they didn't they didn't go oh no we're not doing that because we have these right. super super ideals they just disclosed the fact that they can't do it because their hands are tied their hands are tied <laughs> and we're not letting that stop us for making a great bottle. So yeah. I I appreciated everything about that. Yeah. But then when you go to the double rye, there's two. There's in the mash bill, there's two different mash bills. So it is a 95% rye, 5% malted barley from MGP, and then an 80% rye, 20% malted rye from High West Distillery. So how do you know you're saying that some of their bottles come from MGP and some of their bottles come from they're High blend. West? They're blended. Okay. Yeah, so, they're blended. Okay. So the two mash bills are what's been combined in in into there. this. Correct. Gotcha. Well, I, you're, you're assuming. Grammatically, okay. grammatically, that's, that's what I would assume. I mean, if I'm wrong, I know. I don't know what the bubbles are in the glass. And I'm it's dying gotta to be, know. Yeah. I, I don't mean, know. There's, so, at first so, it looked like it was kind of dusty or something. So, I'm like, no, it's Yeah, so not. listener land, what you can't see is when you look at the bottles, the bottles look like they're pitted on the inside. I wonder if we get inside. a picture of that. And, and I, I don't know what that's about, but it's really kind of cool. So anyway, the mash bill, looking at the website, grammatically speaking, it appears that this is because it's a blend. And so I love that. I love everything about that, and it makes me so super happy. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. So Reba got a picture of the pits, and we'll see if we can't get it in there. Uh, so I don't, I don't know what those are about, and I don't know. And I'll tell you. It almost it, seems like it's like blown glass kind of. Right. And I'll tell you, that's what it made me think of was smoke wagon and smoke wagon talking about making their bottles and mm -hmm. how important that was to them in their whiskey journey i wonder if there isn't some kind of process in making their glass that's kind of interesting yeah i don't know i would love to know if anybody out there they, knows they clearly i mean they clearly i mean with it having their label like engraved into not engraved it's um it's 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 raised so part of the bottle has raised lettering where clearly glass. it was laid into some yeah. kind of yeah mold or something yeah. Whew. i'm gonna drink some water yeah i'm, <laughs> I'm warming up too <laughs> shit's going straight to my brain cells <laughs> all right i want to do a thing okay take a brief brief intermission because i want to play a game because and, and Reba didn't even know I wanted to play this game, so I'm catching her completely off guard. And I don't know how You're many about of these. Maybe spit my drink out. I have no idea how many of these we're going to get through, but we're going to try. Oh, shit. So, my husband has been a saint. If you have listened to this podcast for any length of time, you'll know that I never throw away an original <laughs> bottle. Like, if it's a bottle I've never had before, when it gets empty, the bottle, I'd like to say stored, gets stored. But that implies far more organization than is accurate. We have a graveyard pit. Yeah, but it's everywhere. Pits. <laughs> yeah. Pits. It's, it's literally everywhere. 
And so my saint of a husband who has tolerated it for as long as he can tolerate it <laughs> has finally looked at me and said, you have to do something. It started taking over. Yeah, it, yeah, we don't have room for unopened like, stuff. <laughs> Feed me, see more. Right? Like, it's <laughs> give me blood. Like, it's just, just taking everything. So he's finally come to me and said, babe. Love you, but please, <laughs> I need you to do something. Need some kind of plane, and he's not going to build you that many shelves. <laughs> well, I, even if he did, I mean, I don't have room for that many shelves. Like, there's no place for that many shelves between the books and the bottles. The book, the bottles are going to go first. You know, it sure. could be like no, a- <laughs> no, no, Sorry. because we'll end yes, up in no, here drinking. Yes. A bottle will fall from the ceiling. No, I'm talking somebody. about like with a lip, but no, 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 yes. no, no. It no. They, um, he's right. Yes, because let's let's. If there's if I am nothing, I am honest about my shortcomings. I am not crafty. You could send me, so don't. Yeah, I saw, I saw your. I know, and, and everybody's like, like, "Here's some ideas." No, I don't want ideas. Nobody's if reading my post. If you all want ideas, come get them. Nobody's <laughs> reading my post. They're not reading thoroughly. They're not reading the post. They're I'm like trying to give you ideas. I'm not looking. I, I know. Yes. I, I too have Pinterest. I know. <laughs> I know there's a ton of things I could do. Right. I am not doing any no. of them. I am doing right. none of them. The cra- We're giving you the option to come pick them up before they go in the dumpster. The craftiest shit I can do is make people. And I am done with that. I have done my part for populating the earth. Like I have given my, I've, yes. I've, I've done my part. Now we're just taking I'm pictures now and disposing. Pictures. Just like my children, I'm just taking pictures. We're not disposing, I'm not but. not making any more new ones. I'm not making any more new ones. I'm just taking pictures. So I posted it on Facebook. I said, look. I've got to get rid of these bottles, so I am. I have started to take pictures. I'm going to take pictures, and I'm going to catalog those. And then the pictures, I will take the pictures. I'll have the pictures printed, and I'll do some sort of collage type thing. You know, when you go into a restaurant and there's lights, yes. plates all over the place, something like that. With with a binder, we can hang those up on yeah. the rafters. With a binder, where if you find the picture, you can go to the page in the binder, and it'll tell you what you need to know about the bottles okay. in there. Right? That's my project. And so then the comments on the post were, oh, you could, or you could, or you could. And I'm like, yeah, no. Do you want them so you can? (laughs) That's the point. That's what I asked. I'm like, if you want them, they're going into the trash. So then we have a, so Tamil and I have a mutual friend and I've never met her, but a mutual friend of ours tagged her in the post. That's her whole gig is recycled glass it's all it's it's what she does okay so she and i have talked this afternoon okay she's going to take all All of of them them. so we no longer throw away duplicates we keep the duplicates she'll take everything and she'll take all the glass but wait a minute so now not only is bitches and bourbon your resource to find out like what to try what not to try and how to look like an expert when you go to the liquor store but we are now environmentally conscious yay wow so, when you say, though, don't throw away duplicates, are you keeping any of your bottles? You're not keeping any of them, right? I am keeping, I'm, I'm obviously keeping the Johnny Walker Blue Label yes. Chinese New Year's. And I they haven't really gotten specific- that far. Okay. I haven't really gotten that far yet. Because like, I, I just know- assumed, like, when I saw this in there, I'm like, oh, I don't want that one. Like, there's I'm, a couple special ones, like, then, then, for me, too, but to, I don't know. Then you need to speak up, because I'm throwing all of them out. Okay. Even, even like, the ones. So, I'm not throwing out, obviously, the Jameson that I got in Ireland that has, has our your name, name on it. Yeah. Has our name on it. Um, I'm not throwing out the Johnny Walker Blues. And right now, those are literally the only two. The Whistle Pig 18 is going. The what? Highland Park 18 is going. What about your boxed... Um, which one going yeah, yeah they're all going like I'm not keeping okay I'm just not I mean there's just you have no, a picture to savor the memory. I have yes then and, and that's what I have like that picture and then the accompanying yeah binder that will go with it right. is better than anything that I'm ever going to be able to do otherwise uh, so yeah so outside of those few bottles I, I can't think of anything else mm-hmm. that I'm keeping so and, and honestly, I didn't even like the whistle pig. So, this, I mean, this one was my birthday bottle. So. Right. Absolutely. So, like, those are the kind of things. My special birthday. So, yeah, just take, I mean, so, yes, those are the kind of things. But, so I've started. I have started to take pictures and catalog. Okay. And then 
I will send everything that I don't throw out to her and she will take everything else. Oh, it was so funny. So we've never met and we've had our first telephone conversation this afternoon and it's so funny. And I tell her, I say, you know, look, I said, I I think the number of bottles is in the triple digits. I said, I have, I said, I've already gotten to like 30 and I haven't even gotten outside of my office. (laughs) I said, so I'm fairly certain the number's in the triple digits. Oh, yes. I said, so you can have all of them. And, I will, and, and I'll stop throwing away duplicates because the only bottles that we keep yeah. are original liquor bottles. I'll stop throwing out wine bottles. I'll She's stop. interested in all she of them. all of them. Yeah. I said, which is fine. Yes. As long as you do not judge how many liquor bottles <laughs> I send you. To which she replies, you know, it's funny you say that. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> says that. <laughs> she says, everybody. Is she close by? That. Yeah, yeah, she's here, she's here okay. in town. So, yeah, she's here in town. So, I mean, it's not like you're going to have to hold on to them for no, a long time either. No, she's right here in town. Nice. She's right here in town. Um I, I'm trying to talk her into coming on. The, she's a wine girl, and so I'm trying to talk her into coming on the show. I do a wine episode. Uh, yeah, that's what I said. I, I said. Well, I mean, you of course will, but I mean, like even yeah. me, that is Absolutely. not a big wine drinker. I'm still down. So, what's our game? So the game. <laughs> so the game. Like, how is this leading to a game? Oh, I'm going to tell you. Okay. Because an interesting thing happened. I'm I'm logging all of these, and some of them are already in our spreadsheet, and some of them I have to add because I am the worst. So well, that was and one. some of them we didn't do episodes on. Well, yes, but I still, when I, so I, my intention was as soon as a bottle came through the door, a new bottle that I bought, oh. it went on the spreadsheet. And obviously I didn't do that. And some so, of these are from before then. But anyway. So what I, so during my first picture and logging, what I realized was I really needed to be more diligent about that. Like when I buy bottles, they need, like, before I do anything else, I need to put them in the spreadsheet. Okay. Because I think the amount of information that we're losing by not inspecting the labels more closely is important. Okay. Right? So, because, so there's some that we've had, and I don't remember which off the top of my head, and maybe I will when we go through the game. They're different batches. Yes. Right? We've And we've talked and about we've how, talk, right? like, especially with... Um, Jefferson's Ocean. That's the one that we had talked about how, like, yes. one, the one we taste this time is very is, different from the other one that we taste because of them being different batches. Widow Jane was one that stuck out to me because I love the Widow Jane 10 year. Mm-hmm. The Widow Jane Decadent is probably still one of the best whiskeys I have ever had. But when I was logging the Widow Jane bottle, for the picture and I'm looking at the label on the label it says batch 562 bottle 987 date 2022 five barrel batches so all of the widow janes are done in five barrel batches which means there can't be that many yeah and so I was like this is I am not paying enough attention. Like if I'm telling, like if I'm going to go out there, because I just read a book and and Reba read it too. And it's called (laughs) For the (laughs) Love of Whiskey. whiskey. And it's, it's, it's bored. It's, it's genre. It's genre or not erotica. What would you call it? I mean, it it, it definitely falls under romance. It's spicy romance. Spicy romance, right? Spicy romance. Correct. And, I'm not going into a full book review, no. but I, except to, to let me start off by saying we both liked the original story. Yes. Right? The first 300 pages <laughs> or so. Yes. The original story, we both enjoyed it. Yes. And you do like spicy romance. Yes. As a rule, I do not. Right. It's not, it's not that I don't like it. It's just not my genre. But I figured that there, but there was both, a good balance in that story. It. We both liked yeah. it. It was fine. Yes. So let me just start off with that. If you like spicy romance, go ahead and grab the book. I'm not saying don't get the book. I think the book is fine. But now I have to talk about what irritated me because it's the only thing pertinent <laughs> to the conversation. <laughs> the only thing pertinent to the conversation is the part that irritated me was is the author even on in her author bio on her website talks about being a whiskey connoisseur 
and the handling of the whiskey was so pedestrian. Like it was absolutely horrible. It was pedestrian. When she like talked about But I guess I I only expected pedestrian, I guess. I didn't. I did. I did until you call yourself a whiskey connoisseur. Yes. So when you See, I yourself, did not get into that. When you call yourself a whiskey connoisseur <laughs> and then you write a book called For the Love of Whiskey and then you're All of, of your titles of your chapters are based on whiskey related. Have something related. to do with booze. Yes. That you included Fireball. <laughs> I say no more. And then I think the part that really irritated me the most was that she, when the the very brief Scotch reference, Scotch was mentioned like it was a whole other animal, and I'm like, this is so weird. But anyway, if I if we if we are going to produce podcasts and we're and 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 we're all things booze, particularly whiskey, particularly bourbon then maybe I should be a better steward of the information that I have and pay a little more attention. Okay. So that's one thing that I am going to do different from season five on. I'm going to be more diligent about this. However I can help, let me know. By playing the game. (laughs) All right. So I am going to name bottles. Oh, shit. And you are going to tell me if you remember... I'll make it really easy. <laughs> Baseline is if you remember it at all. Okay. Second level of difficulty is whether or not you liked it. Okay. I think that's as hard as we can get. Because if and and because sometimes points, they come before or after another bottle. <laughs> right. Bonus points. Bonus points will be if you can tell me something else about it. Okay. That you remember. All right. All right. You ready? Yeah. Is this just me answering, or are you going to answer too? Oh, I've answered to myself already, so it's not fair. But I will tell you. I will. Tell you'll you. you'll follow up with your answer yes, after. Yes, okay. But it's it. But I'm, but for the listening universe, this isn't fair because I've already been through the list. That's fine. With the list, in. that's fine. The Blue Run Kentucky Straight Golden Rye Whiskey. Oh, fuck. Uh, yeah. So I don't know that I can specifically remember the different because we've had so many blue runs <coughs> is is that the one with the multicolored so the butterfly so it is not okay then no i don't specifically remember that bottle. i do not specifically remember that bottle okay either the only thing i do remember is i've never had a blue run that i wouldn't buy again same okay yeah right that's, that's and that's I why think. i said like when right, we say blue, fine. yes. When fine. we say blue run, no, I can't particularly remember a specific bottle at any given time, but I know that we have enjoyed all of them. Right. All right. You ready for the next one? Yep. Yeah. Blue Note Juke Joint Uncut Straight Bourbon Whiskey. I remember that one. Oh God, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and it has a punch. I remember. Maybe because I think it gave me a black eye. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> All right, good. We're good there. Yes. Yep. Yes. We're on the same note. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> I think that one was like 100 and, was it 110 proof it's, or 113 or some craziness? It was 121.2. Oh, yeah. yeah. I knew it yeah. was crazy. It is 61% okay. alcohol. Well, that, I rounded up. Yeah. Yes, I remember that one. Johnny Walker Golden Reserve. Yes, that that's actually been one of our favorites. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. I remember. Okay. So I remember that one too. And do you know where I remember it? Because Dan bought yes, it. Yes, he thought that it was the Jack Gold that we liked and he and it was the other yes, yes. I remember. And at sixty dollars a bottle, you're like Yes. Yes. Because it is every to me, to me. Yes. It, it is, is every worth. it is every bit as good as the blue label. Yes. Every bit as good as the blue label. So, yes, that's how I... Very nice. I remember that one. Yep. Um, Blackened. I remember that one. It has the flames on the bottle, right? Mm Mm-hmm. I remember it being very spicy or, or like... Yes. Punch you in your face, something, I remember. Like, it was good, but not a favorite. Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yes. (laughs) So good. This is so fun. I knew this was going to be fun. And... What I'm hoping, and, and this is why I decided to include this on the podcast, because I think it's like a really quick fire way to go through different whiskeys 
and then just kind of give a brief. Especially ones that we haven't done episodes on. Right. And none yeah. Of these, none of these we have. Right. The Senator Straight Rye Whiskey. <clears throat> we tried to pawn that off. <laughs> Truth. You remember it. <laughs> yes, you remember, I do. It's not It's not even great for mixing. Yes, yes, yep. you remember. George Dickel, Bottled and Bond. Um, I do remember. I know, I, I remember us having it. I remember the bottle. I don't remember the occasion. Oh, my goodness. That's You know why? I'm going to tell you why. Probably because I was already fucking drunk. No, no. It's because it, you have regressed memories. The George Dickel Bottled and Bond, we did an episode on, and we did a taste test between it and the Evan Williams Bottled oh, and Bond, yes. and you swore to God you would like the Evan Williams better, and, and then, then you I didn't. couldn't tell. And then yeah. you didn't. And then you didn't. Yeah. Yep. So that's the George Dickel Bottle. Oh, and I just I just broke the streak of things that we didn't do episodes oh, on. Oh, that's all right. But I wanted to see if you would remember. All right. Stranahan's Blue Peak Single Malt Whiskey. I do not have a remembering of that. I one. didn't either, but we have it. <laughs> we have it. Sometimes um, I, I almost want to see the bottle and Bourbon Thirty Small Batch. I remember that. Do you? I it didn't. is a, it is a hundred proof. We actually tried it for the first time at our Bourbon Club the night that we tried it is the hundred proof. I'm yes. so proud of you. Yes, I remember. We I tried. Don't remember. It was funny because we had just bought a bottle that we hadn't yet brought down and opened and then we went to bourbon club and they had it as it was when they had hmm, what are the what are the ones where there's like venus and like there was blue red and black um it was almost like handwritten labels it was that it was that night hang on i do remember i remember it there and here i remember it in either place and because you weren't you weren't a big fan of it. It, it was oh, it so was kind of it was kind of spicy. Yeah, my repressed. Yeah, memory. it was. It's okay. not. It's not. It was definitely not the most tasty. Um, but it was the only one that was a hundred proof. All of the other ones were over a hundred proof that night. Um, Hand me the rye while you're doing that, and I'll pour something. Something. See if it makes noise. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very good. It was pretty good. So we had it at Bourbon Club, and you found the picture. We had it July of 2022, and it was, you remember these bottles? I do remember yes. those bottles. So Sunday morning, Venus and Furs, yes. After Hours, yes. and Bourbon 30. Yes. Yes, that was the night. The Venus was my favorite. The Venus, I remember. Yes. Because the Venus was my favorite. 132 proof. The Venus was? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah. that's why I don't remember. The the after, after that's why I said the Bourbon 30 was the only one. 100 proof that all the others were over. The Sunday morning was 114, and the after hours was 118. And we had all four of them that night. Wow. <laughs> I can't imagine why you don't remember the wow. Bourbon 30. No, I don't. We I picked don't. it up originally because we liked the name of it, you know, Bourbon 30. But... Oh, and that was another thing that happened. And when I was telling you, I'm going to be more diligent about making sure that we put the bottles into the spreadsheet like I'm supposed to. Because when I was looking at the bottle, that's where the name comes from. Evidently, the guy, this, the master crafter for Bourbon 30 is Jeff Mattingly. Okay. And I guess that it comes, the name comes from like when they were working on the farm and they were done for the day. That's what they, it's Bourbon, bourbon 30. Bourbon 30. Which we never did. Like, hot weather work, like, we never called that Bourbon 30. That's always Beer 30. Yeah. it's fucking hot. Right. So, but anyway, I do remember seeing that on the thing. And I'm like, there's so many things that I'm missing of things that we try that, that only come to light when we do episodes. And so maybe I should just start paying attention. Because, like, for instance, if we were to do a Widow Jane episode and we try it and I don't like it. And I'm like, this isn't as good as I remember it. Then I will know. I will know a different that batch. this was the batch that I liked. And Pinhook is really good about that because they are very obvious yes. about when they're vintage, and that's what they call it is vintages. Mm -hmm. That their vintages are. They different. change their whole label. They change, <laughs> yeah, and I think it's such a great neat little idea that they do. I, I really, I do. I really like it. Yes. So anyway, that's the game I wanted to play. That wasn't all of them, but those were the big ones that I wanted to know because some of them I absolutely did not remember. I enjoyed that game. I all. It was fun. I did. I thought it was fun too. And I'm right. glad for the most part we were both on the same page. <laughs>
<laughs> indeed. Indeed. All right. So now um, we are moving on to the High West Double Rye. Cheers. It is. It's spicier than the first one because, I mean, it's... It's it's so weird, though, because it smells sweeter yep. than the first one. But it's got more spice to it. But it's got more... Whoo, to it. Like down your spine. Correct. But still... It's still very smooth. I will tell you that I prefer the bourbon. Yes, I right? agree. But I will tell you, if you are a rye drinker, I don't know how you would find this one unpleasant. Agreed. So the double rye, uh, I think we've really talked about it mm-hmm. already. It comes in... Oh, there is a small, very, very small... Price difference? Very small. I'm interested to see which one's more expensive. Do you want to guess? The rye. They are off. They they differ in price by a dollar. That's it. A dollar, and the bourbon is a dollar more. That's I paid a dollar more for the bourbon than I did the double rye. Why would you have thought the rye was more? Um, I guess because of them blending from multiple from you know more than one. They do it with the bourbon too. Right. So, yeah, I don't know. I I honestly would have thought. Maybe the rise less just because maybe they think that people would be more inclined to buy bourbon than they would be inclined to buy a that rye. Make, that makes sense. Maybe. Especially when they're sitting next to each other on the shelf. Right. Like, maybe. It's like, not like they're in, here's a rye section and here's a bourbon section. And, right. Okay. And, now, and I don't know. I don't know that all liquor. I, actually, I do know. Not all liquor stores do it that way. So, at Jeff's, where I picked these up, they had, if it was a collection. Yes. Or the same label yeah they put it all together which i really like yes because then i could go oh look at all of these i'm like one of those one of those one of those one of those Mm -hmm. but many liquor stores will separate them based on here's a rye section here's a bourbon section here's american whiskey Mm -hmm. here's your canadian whiskey here's your irish but obviously your irish and canadian are not going to be in the line yeah they do separate those yeah right but so i thought that was i thought that was fairly interesting hmm so I was very happy about that. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, this gives me an idea for my show. <laughs> All right. I would like to, because... Try this with ice? Yeah. I was I just mean, getting ready to ask. Well, there's not a whole lot else to say about it because we've already professed. But our, I'm also curious to see if yeah. this kind of reduces the... Woo! Yeah. I mean, we've already professed <laughs> tickle our Tickle down love, your spine. <laughs> our, our love uh, of High West and yes. everything. Everything they do. And I really love it when there's a bottle that we get... And then I go and, and there's a story. story. Yes. And the story is also fantastic. Yes. Because sometimes you get a great whiskey and it's just an okay story. Or you can't find shit. We've had that. Right. And then other times you'll get a great story and just an okay whiskey. Yes. And then sometimes, like with the High West, you get both. And I'm super, <laughs> super excited about that. To remember partaking in contradiction. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and 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 see, and the contradiction, <laughs> the contradiction is another one, right? Because it's, they need they need to send us a bottle. I think we got still, a bad batch, but we wouldn't know what batch that is because. No, but that wouldn't. was even before bitches and bourbon. Yes. Though. So that was before we even. But it was so bad we pawned it off. It was. That was even before we knew. Yes. Like, we knew anything about we, that our depth of whiskey knowledge even went to, oh, what, there's different batches? Like, yes. We didn't, like, we didn't even know. So we I was even, just drinking on the back porch bullshit. Yeah, like, we, that, we didn't even know. And she's and, and Reba's not wrong. We waited for some unsuspecting person to come over, and it was, t- we, we completely abused, we had completely abused a new person's want to be included in our shenanigans. Well, to be fair... She said she liked it. That is the one, like, that we can go back to time and time again. It was the worst bottle of whiskey I've ever had. Yep. All right. right. I'm going to go get ice. Okay. And we're back. We're back. With ice. (laughs) With ice. In the double rye. Making my favorite sound. Wow, that changes a whole lot. Like, and it hasn't even been in there that very long. Yeah, I like it. And and we've talked about this before. Like, what's your favorite way to drink whiskey? Whichever way you want. Oh! I'm so glad we got there because I would have completely forgotten. And this is how we'll end it because I know we've gone so long. So I'm on the website. Okay. The High West website. And they have, as most liquor websites do. Like how it tastes best type thing? They just have a whole bunch of different cocktails. Oh, okay. Recipes. Okay. Right? Like the first four I look at 
it's like high west, some kind of gin, some kind of tequila, some kind of rum. Like I'm like, holy shit. Like all of those? Yes. All of them. All of them. Almost like a Long Island. Like the very first one, the very first one on the website is called an (laughs) M&M. High West Double Rye, Don Julio Anejo, Jalapeno Infused something, Mezcal. Like, I'm like, holy shit. Right. Right. Silver Star is the Double Rye and tequila. And you just go through all of these different recipes and... You're just like holy hell! Like they're. I can't imagine mixing the bank like double rye with tequila. The bank has one of their whiskeys called the Campfire, brandy, sherry. (laughs) Like wow, bar like it's just all. Oh, and this one spritz with CBD oil. I think we need to pick a couple of recipes off there to try just because, like, I can't imagine. I don't know that I can afford the ingredients on this thing. No, I mean, like, we, I we mean, would like, be selective. Shit. We would be selective of what it what. So, like, for example, like tequila, does it, like, even specify, like, a type of tequila? Yes. Okay, because, like, there's a lot of different tequilas, and I can't imagine many of them mixing with that. The Red Light, High West Bourbon, Banana Rum, Sweet Vermouth, like. What? Yeah. <laughs> Like, I want to know who came up. Does it say who came up with the recipes? No. Okay. No. Garnish with a brulee banana. Like, I really want to know if they tried these. Now I can brulee a banana. I, w- I really want to know if they, could, if they tried these. Yeah, because, you okay, so you can, when you're looking at the recipes, you can sort them. Their categories are classic cocktails, high west originals, and saloon menu. They have one called Destroying Angel. <laughs> what is in that? Rye, gin, and rum. <laughs> oh God! I, I bet it is. Which what's crazy is is it a is it a regular rum? It's the pineapple rum. Uh, so, okay, so you have to include that. You can't just say rum. Like pineapple rum is a big difference. It to is true. regular rum. It is true. So so when I'm when I'm starting to feel a little bit better and I can finally focus enough to yeah. read, uh, I was sitting outside because you know I love to read outside. Yes. Me so too. I'm I've reading, been doing that every morning. I'm reading outside, and I'm starting to feel a little bit more like myself. And I'm like, I would really like a drink, but I need something that's not going to go straight. To I your need brain. a boat. Where I, you can. I, st- I need a boat drink. You need a day drink. I need a boat. I need yes. a boat drink. Yes. Right. So I go inside and I, I tell Mike. I said, I'm going to make a drink. Do you want one? And he says, Yes. He says, What are you making? I said, I don't really know. So, but I knew I wanted it to be blended. I knew I wanted to icy something cold. Sitting outside, mm-hmm. easy. So I go in the cabinet and I look, and there's this bottle of pineapple rum. To yes. which I take the blender, I fill the blender with ice. I take the little orange mio that we use. Yes. Squirt the orange mio in there and fill the blender up with the pineapple rum. <laughs> So that's all that's in there is ice, yeah. Mio, pineapple run, zzz. and <laughs> it was amazing. And I only had one. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so when I say only had one, you know the biggest turbines. Yes, it was. Yeah, so it one, lasted you for hours. Yes, one blender in our cups. Yes, two drinks. Okay, so, so you had yes yours and his. So maybe it was really three. Okay. So and it was one. It was delicious. Next time we need to have a, we're sitting outside it was drinking and reading. Delicious invite. <laughs> All right, podcast universe, high west, know it, learn it, <sighs> love it. It's fantastic. Here's Try to- it. Cheers. To the next. Time. Thanks for hanging out with Ape and Reba on this episode of Bitches and Bourbon. Make sure to check out the links in the show notes, and we look forward to hearing from you. Until next time. Here's the bad bitches and good bourbon. Cheers. I mean, you have to like spicy pickle.